You know, sometimes I think we forget just how far games have come in the past 20 years. I mean, nowadays, people expect every game to have photorealistic graphics, fast-paced gameplay, and immersive storylines. But it wasn't always like that. In fact, not long ago, this was considered cutting edge. From the mid-80s to the early 90s, games only took small steps to look and play better. But in 1996, games took their first big leap. This is Super Mario 64. Super Mario 64 was a launch title for the Nintendo 64 and was released in North America on September 29, 1996. Selling over 11 million copies, Super Mario 64 is the best-selling Nintendo 64 game ever made. The game was one of the first fully three-dimensional platformers and is considered by many to be one of the most revolutionary games ever created. And on this episode of In Retrospect, I'll show you guys why. Our story begins with a letter from Princess Peach, inviting Mario to the castle for some delicious cake. Mama. Mia. However, when Mario arrives, he discovers that not only has Bowser taken over the castle, he's also imprisoned Peach and all of her servants and locked away the castle's 120 power stars. Mario must collect these power stars in order to save the princess, her servants, and the castle from Bowser's evil clutches. Super Mario 64 is a 3D platformer filled with multiple levels. Each level is a giant world that the players are encouraged to explore freely. Every world has seven power stars, six main stars and a secret seven star you can get by collecting 100 coins. And many stars only appear by completing certain tasks. Some have you race down a slide against a massive penguin, some have you fight a giant bob and some have you solving puzzles. Several enemies return from previous entries in the Mario franchise, like Goombas, Koopas, Baboms, Boos, and Thwomps. But several new enemies appear as well, such as Bomps, Snuffets, Heavehos, Scuttlebugs, but by far the scariest addition to any game ever is this piano. Okay, Mario, you just have to get this one red coin. That's all you've got to do. Just slowly inch your way. Oh god, no, I'm sorry, please don't get me. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No longer confined to the two dimensions we were used to seeing, Mario can now move freely in all directions. Getting Mario's controls right were the development team's highest priority when making the game. The first testing scenario the team created for Super Mario 64 involved Mario chasing a golden rabbit around on a simple grid. After laying the groundwork, new abilities for Mario were added, which included walking, crawling, kicking, punching, wall jumping, triple jumping, lawn jumping, back flipping, and also he can break dance. <laughs> Another feature that only appeared in Super Mario 64 and its remake, Super Mario 64 DS, were three different caps that Mario could wear. Each cap did something different, which helped Mario in his journey. The first cap you unlock is the wing cap, which is useful for getting to hard to reach areas and finding secrets. Next up is the vanish cap, which makes Mario invulnerable to attacks. He's also able to pass through certain walls to reach new areas, and finally, there's the metal cap. When grabbing this hat, Mario turns into Metal Mario. Metal Mario is able to withstand fire, walk underwater, and even defeat enemies just by touching them. Metal Mario. Honestly, I could go on and on about secrets in this game. There's countless theories, glitches, and secrets that people are still uncovering to this day. What the? There's plenty of secrets in Super Mario 64, so let's dive in! Once you collect all 120 stars in the game, certain aspects will change. For example, Bowser's final message will be different, where instead he'll insult his troops and talk about how he missed all the power stars. 
Next up, the cannon outside of Peach's castle will finally open, where you can fly to the top of the castle, only to find everybody's favorite carnivorous green dinosaur, Yoshi! Yoshi will congratulate you on completing the game and give you a present from the Super Mario 64 staff, 100 lives. You'll also learn a new triple jump that makes you briefly invulnerable. Pretty cool. After collecting the 120 stars, if you go back to Cool Cool Mountain to race the penguin, you'll find he's just gotten really, really, really tiny. Look at him, he's just a little cute baby. No, I'm just kidding, he's massive, he's enormous. Do you feel in charge? If you race him again, you'll find that this time he's a lot tougher. And while it doesn't get you anything new, it's still a fun challenge. Earlier in the game, after completing the second Bowser stage, Bowser in the Fire Sea, head back to Dire Dire Docks. You'll notice three changes. First of all, Bowser's sub disappears. Secondly, moving poles appear at the framework of the docks. And third, the gate blocking the path to the pond outside of Peach's castle is now open. Now that those intended secrets are out of the way, let's talk about the fan theories. Specifically, probably the most famous fan theory of any Mario game ever. With the exception of the whole Peach is dead and Rosalina is your daughter thing that was covered in the game theory video. Spoilers! No, I'm talking about L is real 2401. Now if you're not familiar with this theory, let's start at the beginning. Before release, Super Mario 64 was going to have two-player split-screen, featuring Mario and his brother Luigi as playable characters. However, the N64's capabilities at the time prevented this feature from being included, and Luigi was taken out of the game. Mario! Later on, when Mario 64 was eventually released, fans noticed some strange writing on the statue in the castle courtyard. While the general consensus is that the statue reads Eternal Star, others quickly latched onto the idea that the writing said L is real 2401, with most assuming that the L stood for Luigi. Hey. Fans went crazy trying to decipher this code. People thought that the 2401 meant that there were 2,401 coins in the entire game, and that if you collected them all and returned to that statue, Luigi would then become unlocked and playable. Obviously, this wasn't the case, but that didn't stop people from spreading this theory like wildfire, even going so far as to altering screenshots in the game to add Luigi in. This was back in 1996. People were committed to this. It wasn't until eight years later in 2004, in Super Mario 64 DS, that Luigi finally became playable in Super Mario 64. A direct sequel for Super Mario 64 was intended to be released in 1999 for the Nintendo 64 disk drive, Super Mario 64 2. The game was cancelled early in production due to the lack of progress as well as the commercial failure of the 64 disk drive in Japan. Apparently, only one demo level was ever made of this game, but never publicly revealed. Shigeru Miyamoto has stated that the game was going to have multiplayer functionality. And while never seeing the light of day, it's possible that Super Mario Sunshine, Super Mario Galaxy, and Super Mario Galaxy 2 all salvaged elements from this game. Now if that rumor is true, we might never know. And who knows, maybe someday Nintendo will make a Super Mario 64 too. With Super Mario 64 being the highest selling game for the Nintendo 64, it was only a matter of time before I made a video about it. Regardless of your opinion on the game, you cannot deny its impact on the gaming world today. In retrospect, Super Mario 64 is an essential part of gaming history. Its legacy will carry on for years and generations to come. Thank you so much for playing my game. Thanks for watching in retrospect, guys. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If not, well, give it a thumbs down and move on with your life. If you want to stay up to date on the content I release every week, go ahead and subscribe. I post every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. My name's Cody, keeping nostalgia alive, and as always, I'll see you next time.